In today's episode of the podcast, I'm going to be sharing with you my finished softy hat, my small progress that I've made on my Felix pullover, my foray into punch needle art, and the beginnings of what I think is going to be a fabulous granny square blanket. So grab your knitting, something cozy to drink, and let's get started. <music> Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 61 of the Wool Needles Hands podcast. My name is Taylor, and I will be your host. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, though occasionally I do get up to other fiber-related crafts from time to time. Today is going to be one of those days I'm going to be chatting with you about punch needle art, what have you, and we're gonna be talking about a little crochet today as well, so that will be fun. I am coming to you from Henderson, Nevada, which is a small suburb outside of Las Vegas, Nevada, in the Southwest United States. This is where I'm from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our four-year-old son, Ronan, our seven-year-old son, Angus, our dog, Pepper, and our cat, Oscar. All right, let's go ahead and get the ad mini stuff out of the way really quick. First things first, I am wearing the much-loved Whatever Speckles Your Yarn tee. This is a t-shirt that I came up with um, for Fiber for the People my yarn business and uh, I brought it, I think I released it maybe two or three years ago, it sounds about right. But whatever speckles your yarn, um, folks love these tees, I love it. I think it's a really cool sentiment. Um, these tees are now available in the Wool Needles Hands merch shop. Um, I've had people ask why they are no longer available on the Fiber for the People website, and that's because I'm trying to kind of simplify things. So the Whatever Speckles Your Yarn shirts are now only available on the Wool Needles Hands merch shop. Um, it has the statement on the front, and then on the back, it says uh, Fiber for the People yarn. So it is a kind of like a Fiber for the People branded tee because that's when, when I came up with the idea for this little phrase, it was under the umbrella of my yarn business. So it does have the Fiber for the People logo on the back. It's kind of smallish and at the top of the shirt. But whatever speckles your yarn on the front, it is available on a tri-blend tee, which is the one I have on right now. And it's also available on a premium cotton tee. The tri-blend, the one that I'm wearing right now is really wrinkle resistant. It's the easiest to just throw on right out of the dryer. The premium tee is available on a larger range of sizes and colors. However, it is 100% um, premium cotton. So you are going to have to perhaps iron it after it comes out of the dryer. It's not as like um, low maintenance as this one is, but it does have a, lot, a large variety of colors. So if you are interested in your own whatever speckles your yarn tee, head over to the merch shop, show some support for the channel. You can do that by going down into the description box below this video. There is a link there. You can also find the link in the about section of this YouTube channel, or you can just go to woolneedleshandsmerch.com and shop all the Wool Needles Hands merch over there. Okay, next, before I move on to um, what's going on in my mug, I do wanna mention that we are running a Felix for Fall knit along. We are all knitting Felix cardigans or Felix pullovers by Amy Christophers. And when I say we are all, I'm referring to the people that are participating in the cowl, of course, not everybody. But that is what we're knitting for the knit along. If you would like to see some of the really pretty whips coming out of that knit along, you can find them over on Ravelry. You can go to the Ravelry group for the Wool Needles Hands podcast, which is linked down below. Or if you're on Instagram, Instagram, you can search the hashtag Felix for fall K-A-L and you'll see all the current whips that are going on over there on Instagram as well. If you want to see what's going on in the Felix for fall knit along and possibly get involved yourself, you, there's plenty of time. Definitely go check out those areas. Ravelry is a great place to get more information on the knit along in general. Okay, before we jump into the meat of the episode, as always, let's go ahead and talk about what I have in my mug. Um, first of all, my mug is a hand-thrown mug that I that I purchased um, on a visit to Sedona, Arizona about a year ago, almost exactly a year ago. It's really beautiful. And in this mug is some coffee. Um, it's morning, it's Saturday. You're gonna be seeing this on Sunday. Okay, I wanna get something out of the way really quick. Um, I get a lot of questions regarding the cardigans that I wear. I am a big cardigan wearer. When the weather starts to get to a place where I can throw a cardigan on over a shirt, I am, it's almost on the regular daily I'm wearing a cardigan. Um, I have several cardigans. Most of them are store-bought because I haven't gotten up the nerve to knit a cardigan yet. I mean, I have one on the needles. If you've watched a few episodes ago on my Frogger finish, um, you know that I have a cardigan on the needles. I don't know when it's going to get finished. I can't rely on that but I need cardigans in my life and I wear them frequently. So on the last several episodes of anything here on the channel, I've been wearing a cardigan. All of those cardigans are store-bought. People ask um, what pattern it is, store-bought. And I, um, 
in the vein of like unpopular knitting opinions from the video that I posted last, I am totally on board with people buying store-bought knits. It doesn't bother me. I don't take offense to it. Um, I don't feel like you should be knitting those things because you have the capability. So don't, you know, what I'm so not on board with that. Um, I think there's not enough time in the day and sometimes you fall in love with a sweater and you know that you're gonna wear it a lot. So go for it. So yeah, these are store bought cardigans. The sweater I had on in the last video I posted about unpopular knitting opinions, that is a cashmere knit sweater from Madewell. Um, yeah, so if I am wearing a cardigan and I don't mention what pattern it is, it's chances are it was store bought. I get asked that a lot, so I figured I'd answer it here. Store bought cardigans and I'm cool with that. Let's talk finished objects first, because I, I have like one and then I have something else, but I don't think it counts as like an FO. So, okay. Last episode of the podcast, I shared with you guys two skeins of yarn that I really wanted to cast a hat on with um, that I had dyed as lucky strikes for the shop. So it was this, they're caked up now. So obviously they look a little different. Um, but this is 100% organic Aaron, Merino Aaron from Fiber for the People. And then this is the Kid Mohair Silk Base in this really pretty dusty mauve color. Love it. So almost, I think it was the day that I filmed that podcast, I decided to cake those up and cast onto the softy hat. Um, and I can't for the life of me remember um, the name of the designer. I'll pop it up. But it is um, the softy hat. It was a free pattern on Lina's website. Um, I don't think that you can get the pattern directly on Ravelry. It like links you away to their website, but it's a free pattern and it's a, it's a great pattern. And I finished it. So here is my softy hat and I'm happy with it. I think it came out really nice. The only thing about it, I knit this in with the intention of it being my own hat, <laughs> but you know, these like really thick squishy brims, like the folded brims like that, they just don't look that great, at least for me, because I have short hair, like really short hair. Um, I feel like it kind of just starts, it looks like I just have like a, like a thick headband on my head and you lose like the hair. I don't know what it is. It's just almost like overwhelming on my head. Whereas if you have hair that can come down out of the hat and you see that hair coming out of the hat, it just gives it a different look. Now, if I unfolded the brim and kind of just wore it like this, I think it would be different and I would like it, but it's just too long to do that. It would just be way too slouchy. So this hat's not going to be for me, needless to say, and that's fine. I don't need another hat. It was just more like I wanted to knit with this yarn. Definitely it was a process thing. Um, so this is going to be gifted. I'm not exactly sure who I'm going to be gifting it to, but it's definitely going to be for somebody else. And I think that they'll love it. It's so squishy. Ugh, I love, I love how squishy it is. The yarn is really beautiful too. I, I think that the way those two yarns paired is really nice. That mohair kind of warms up that Aaron just a little bit. You can see a little bit of kind of, uh, color streaking in there, which I think is pretty. So yeah, that's my softy hat. And it's a really great idea if you need a quick gift knit for somebody, the softy hat, plus the pattern is free. So who doesn't love that? Okay, I'm gonna share a real quick status of my Felix because I've made so little progress since the last time we spoke, but it's something. It's now, I wanna say I'm two inches away on the body from beginning the ribbing. So I'm getting really close. And I kind of think I might start the ribbing one inch sooner than it's, uh, told in the pattern only because I want my ribbed hem to be wider. As it sits right now, I think the bottom hem of your sweater turns out to be about that deep because it's about the same, yeah, it's the same depth as like the neckline. And I just feel like the hem of the bottom of the sweater for me, I prefer it to be a little bit wider, a little bit uh, deeper to give some more structure to the bottom of the sweater. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think instead of starting my ribbing I think it's nine inches. I'm gonna start it at eight. Yeah, it's something like that. So I probably, I feel like after I finish this round, that's what I'm gonna be doing is moving on to the ribbing and it'll just be a one by one rib uh, cause that's what I did up here on the neckline as well. So that is my Felix, loving it. Loving all of the Felixes that I'm seeing online coming out of the knit along, just beautiful. Um, let me grab this yarn. Here is the yarn that I'm using. 
This is Fiber for the People yarn. This is Organic Merino Worsted in the Yucca colorway. And this is Kid Mohair Silk in kind of a one-off um, nut brown colorway that I think is just so lovely with this. It warms it up nicely. Okay. So that is it in the way of knitting, but I do have a couple other things I wanna share before I go. So the first thing I wanna share with you guys is something, okay, so one of the things I did this week um, for my son's school is I went to, they had, they're doing raffle baskets. So if you're familiar with like uh, fundraising at elementary schools or schools in general, sometimes they do fundraising baskets where each class or grade level um, asks for donations from parents and then they create gift baskets that people can then buy raffle tickets for. Well, my son's preschool is doing that and they were doing, uh, the basket that his class had was for crafts. I think it was like family craft night or something like that, which is a lot of fun. So I went to Joanne's and I got to the punch needle kits and the kit I don't have the picture that goes with the kit that I'm going to show you and it was for this <laughs> so I um so yeah so this is punch needle I don't even know what is it punch needle art punch needle I don't know I'll just call it punch needle art but um it comes with it came with this little punch needle the yarn goes through the hollow needle tip there, and then you're literally punching the yarn through this like gauzy muslin type fabric um, in such a way that when you bring the loops up, it creates this really nice texture. And then of course you can throw the colors together in a pattern and you have this. So this is a cute little camping scene in the mountains. Now this um, design was actually printed on the fabric. So it's, it's printed on the fabric. I can, let me see if I can show you. If you look at the picture on the back of this kit, you can see like there's a design printed on the fabric there. And then you, it's like color by numbers. I think that's what I was trying to say is that you add the yarn to the places where the color is specified. Um, so it's, that's a really good way to put it. It's like color by numbers with, um, like fiber. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give it a try. It wasn't a huge time investment, but you got a really cute finished product when you're all done. Um, and then maybe that could lead to like creating like pillow cushions or cute tea towels. I don't know, whatever. It, it was, I was becoming very like romantic <laughs> about it, like thinking about the possibilities. So I brought this kit home and I sat down. It comes with the yarn, everything was included. So this kit had the um, yarn included plus the punch needle plus the, the design, all of that. So here's the little yarns. I didn't really, I mean, they're kind of all over the place and they're nothing special. I think it's just um, basic acrylic yarn. Um, so they give you all of that. And then all the instructions on how to load your needle. It gives you the like tool that you use. This is gonna be really hard to show cause it's so flimsy, but they give you this tool that you use. It's kind of like a similar, just on a larger scale to what you use to thread a sewing needle. I don't know if you can see that wire there, but that just goes into the needle and pulls the yarn through the hollow tip at the end. So they give you that, the needle, the instructions, all of it, and the hoop and the fabric. And then they walk you through how to do it. And so I sat down and I got started. And the punching part of it, like getting the needle to go through um, the fabric is kind of, and I know that this is kind of a big needle, but it's not easy. And in order to do it, you kind of have to give yourself like some leverage to get it to go through. You can't just sit here and imagine somebody embroidering, right? With a small sewing needle. It's not like I'm just sitting here punching like this. You have to like sit and like push the needle down in there. And you really hope that you don't have this angled in such a way that when you stick the needle through, you're going to like you know, cleave yourself in the brisket with your needle and it's, it can get dangerous. And so I grabbed like a pillow and I was putting a pillow under here and I'm like mm, mm, punching this needle through my husband sitting on the chair, like, and he can hear the fabric like splitting. Like here, I'll do it for you so you can hear it. Here's the microphone. Like I have to work to get it in there. And so he's listening to me do this and it was more like this sound. Kind of not not the greatest sound you just sounds like you're tearing fabric and i mean that's what it is like you're punching it through the, the fabric to get the loops to go through i don't love it i really don't love it i don't see myself doing this again um i think this is cute i'm not sure what i'm gonna do with this i know it's not great i mean and this is what the backside looks like 
And I know that some punch needle craft or whatever, this is the side that is used. Um, but from what I saw on the front of the box, this is what it looked like. So I assumed that this was the right side. Um, yeah, not sure what I'm gonna do with this. I like that I can say that I've done it and given it a try. It just was not very relaxing. It was kind of awkward in terms of how you sit. I think it's almost best if you had like a foam, like a piece of foam core or something under it and you're sitting at a table and you're working on it that way. It's definitely an active um, craft. It's not like something that you can just sit in like knitting where you're watching something on TV and just kind of passively like working on your project. It's not like that. Like you have to be kind of at a table, like doing the thing. So I think my, my expectations were just off. Um, I think it would be fun for kids, real tactile, um, lots going on here that would keep their attention. So I definitely think it's good for that. But I think for what I was looking for, this was not it. I'm going to put it back here in this little basket, this basket, dad, if you're watching, you can correct me here. Was this grandma's basket? I can't remember if it was gr my dad's side, my grandma on my dad's side, or my grandma on my mom's side. I'm pretty sure this was my grandma's on my dad's side. Just a sewing basket, <laughs> so cute. Um, look at the brick, is that bric-a-brac or whatever? It's just really cute. So I decided to put this stuff in here. Oh, and actually, that wasn't it. That wasn't all I was gonna share in terms of kits that I saw at Joann's. I decided to try also embroidery. And I don't want to dive like off the deep end into embroidery because I know that that's a rabbit hole that you could just get lost in. And being the type of person that I am, I can really go hard on new hobbies and I have to be careful. So I picked up just a cute kit. So this was the kit that I picked up. It's just this little cute embroidery design. And I loved the colors. That was one of the things about it that really caught my attention were the colors of the floss. I just thought the palette was really cool. So that's the color palette. And they're really pretty. So I really liked that. I really liked the colors. And I was, once I had done that um, punch needle and realized how I didn't like that, how it just was not for me, I realized that the embroidery might actually be more what I was looking for because it is something you can sit down in a chair and you can stitch using an embroidery needle, which is much less like aggressive <laughs> and you can work on some embroidery. And I remember um, when I was much, when I was a child, I remember doing cross stitch um, and I know that they're not the same thing, but I remember that it was a similar setting, right? Like you can sit um, and do cross stitch much like you can sit and do embroidery. So I think that might be something that I try next. But yeah, punch needle art is just not, it's not my cup of tea. You know what, wouldn't you know it? Mohair ends up everywhere, you guys. That's kind of a bummer. I'm still gonna drink it though. The next thing, the last thing I wanna share with you guys is something that I started pretty soon after the last episode of the podcast um, because I had received some balls of yarn from Knit Picks and, and, and with the intention of creating this design, but I didn't think I was gonna start it as soon as I did. But my next project is the Dockside Throw by Mallory Crawl. I started following Mallory on Instagram not long ago. She has some of the most lovely um, crochet projects for like domestic goods, um, pillow covers, throws, things like that. Ugh, I love them every single time. So this is the Dockside Throw. It's a pretty popular one over on her Instagram and um, it has a lot of downloads on Ravelry. It's just, it's a classic looking granny square blanket. I'll pop a better picture up on the screen. What I love about this is not only all the pretty granny squares, I love the creamy yarn that she uses in between to connect the granny squares. And I really love that navy blue um, edging with almost like a bobble. I don't know what that is, but it's so pretty. I love it. And I just love the color assortment, everything. Just such a classy looking granny square blanket. So I decided to take the plunge because I had so much fun knitting that giant granny square blanket that I completed like two episodes ago. And I know it's not the same because this is going to require a lot more time and more yarn and the yarn is smaller. Like I, I get that it's not the same, but I kind of liked the idea of sitting down and having one of those projects that you can just make, you know, make a few granny squares, put them in the basket for later. And then down the road when you've amassed, how many is it? 
120 granny squares, then you can go ahead and commence putting them together into a blanket. So it's just one of those long-term projects. So I decided I would give it a shot and I did, I started. So what I have here, this is all of the yarn that needs, that is required for the pattern. And it is the Swish Worsted um, by Knit Picks, really affordable yarn. Um, it's a nice squishy superwash, 100% superwash worsted merino. So she calls for the undyed yarn as that like creamy uh, in between fabric that you see on the blanket. And in the pattern, she even says like, you could purchase the worsted weight that is this creamy color and it would be more, or you could purchase the undyed version and you get an entire hundred gram hank for less. And I would recommend that to anybody. I thought that was really smart and, you know, kind of thoughtful that she put that in there because it's so true. If you need like a basic cream colored yarn for a project, don't buy a yarn dyed to look like that. Buy the undyed yarn, you're gonna pay less um, because, and it's gonna be less processed and all of this. And that's what she put in the pattern was just to use the Swish Bare Worsted um, from Knit Picks. So this is kind of available for yarn dyers. Um, a really great option if you're just getting into dyeing yarn, by the way, it's not very expensive. Um, so it calls for several different colors. Um, that's, that's it. That's the colors. And they're really lovely colors. When you see them all together in their little group, it's very inspiring. So those are all the colors for all the different granny squares that I need to make for the blanket, all 100 and however many I said of them. Um, and here's what I have so far. Now, again, I just started, not like I have to say, like, I'm not feeling like I'm behind or anything because I'm not on a schedule for this. Um, but I only have a few so far. I am doing this on a G hook, so a four millimeter G hook, which is, I think, two sizes smaller than what the pattern calls for. The first time I did, I did a granny square to test kind of like my gauge using the hook that was recommended in the pattern, and I came up with this one. And it's a very cute granny square, but it is kind of loose. Like there's lots of gaps in the crochet, in the double crochets. So it is a little bit more gappy than I think I, would want. And not only that, it's much larger than what the gauge is for the actual design. And so I went down a hook size and now we're here. So I'm going to show you the same. Well, here, let me show you different colors so you can see the difference. So that's my difference in size. So you can see the other one behind it and how much larger it is. So yeah, it went down in size quite a bit. They're really cute though, aren't they? So cute. So this is the size we're going for here, this three and a half inch, um, four round granny square, four round meaning there's four colors in there. Um, all of these ends are really, I, I even, t I said to myself like, weave in the ends as you go, meaning like finish one and then weave its ends in and then put it in the basket. Yeah, no, that just went out the window as I'm like, I'm working them up and then throwing them in the basket. It's not that fast. It's like I work one up and I set it in the basket. And then I do the next one, set it. And now I have like a stack like this of little granny squares with just an insane amount of ends. Like, why are they so long? Why did I cut the ends to be so, so long? I don't know. Hello. It's like my camera doesn't even want to focus on that. It's so alarming. So what I like about this is that each square, she has like a whole list like a whole list of all of the different granny squares that you have to crochet for this design. And she lays it out for you, um, color placement and everything. Um, and she has it listed here. So you can literally go through and cross off like I'm doing here, cross off the ones that you've completed. And for every granny square, there is an um, uh, opposite granny square. So for example, this, these two. 
for this is the first one that I made of this granny square and then this is the second. So you have an opposite version. So that means instead of starting on this one, instead of starting with that conch, conch, whatever color, I started with this golden color here and worked out from there, but they are the opposite of one another. So you grab the yarn that you need for this one and you go ahead and you can use it to make this one and then you cross the two off of your list on the paper. Uh, yeah, it's just overall, it's a really great, it's a great design, a uh, great pattern for a really cute granny square blanket. So that is what I have going on here. I should teach my kids how to weave in ends <laughs> and like incentivize them to weave in my ends for me. I mean, how hard is that? Can you imagine a hundred and however many ends there are there, 120 or whatever squares holding off until the very end. And then you have to seam all of those together. Like what on earth have I gotten myself into? I don't know. Do know that I need to get the mohair out of my coffee. It's a problem. Well, that is it for today. That's all the progress that I've made, all the little things that I've been getting up to over the week. It has been a busy week, um, but it feels good to sit here and share these things with you today. So I thank you so much. Please don't forget if you enjoyed anything here today, if you took something away from this episode and enjoyed the content, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. I, I can't explain why, but I do know that all of those little thumbs up that you give the video down below um, help immensely. And also if you'd like to see more from the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want, you can click the bell icon and you'll be notified anytime I upload anything new on the channel. But until next time, when I get to see you guys again for the midweek ramble on Wednesday, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.